Welcome. Uh, since you're here, let me be the first to say I'm sorry for whoever hurt you because you are interested in RNG abusing Pokespot Pokemon in Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness on the Nintendo GameCube circa 2005. Uh, and you want to do that on retail, you don't want to use an emulator, and you don't want to go digging through archived Yahoo GeoCities Japan blogs that have since been discontinued. Uh, so you went looking for a video and here you are. Um, I'm going to teach you how to do it, and it's going to be fun, so let's get started. On my left, we have my stream directly from my Wii, and on the right, I have three programs. They're the only three that you'll need. I say only, like it's not a big deal, but uh, you're going to need the GCN RNG Manipulation Assistant. Uh, that can be found on Al Delaro 5's GitHub. I'll put the link in the description. And the other two programs you're going to need are XD Seed and XD Pokemon. Um, I'm hoping that since you're here, you're at least somewhat familiar with uh, Coliseum RNG. Uh, I'm a Blissey on YouTube, has really great videos on that. Um, but what I'm here going to show you today is how to use these tools for XD. Uh, so right now what I'm doing is following the GCN RNG Manipulation Assistance tools for finding the initial seed. Um, and what you do is you go to Versus and you select a Quick Battle, as I've done here. And you're going to select, first time you're going to select the two party leaders of the, your and the opposing uh, team's Pokemon. And then you're going to back out, click it again, and then you're going to input those Pokemon as well as their uh, HP values uh, as it prompts. There's a nice little prompt in the tool, as you can see. Uh, you'll follow that. Uh, you just do what it says and it'll spit out your initial seed. Uh, this initial seed value is what is going to, you know, allow you to search for the Pokemon you want, and you'll do that in XD Seed on this tab. Before we go on, uh, let's take a look at this tab and look at the translations. Um, the top one there is initial seed, uh, there's frame range, so you'll set your minimum and maximum. Uh, you need to set the number of your Pokemon in the party. Uh, this affects the seed generation. Uh, you need to know the Japanese names of your Pokemon. You can find that on Cerebi or Bulbapedia. Uh, same with Natures. Uh, you don't need to set your ability because abilities are actually determined after Shininess is determined. It's kind of like egg RNG in that way. Uh, the next box is Gender. Uh, you don't really need to worry about that unless you care. And then you set your TID and SID. Uh, you can learn those by opening your save up in PK Hex. Uh, if you have a Wii, it's really easy. If you don't, I'm sorry. Now the Bonsly Roaming Box, uh, we should take a second to talk about this because uh, if you haven't played XD, I don't know why you'd be doing this if you haven't, but I'm sure some people will. Uh, if you haven't played XD, there's a Bonsly that roams around and will come and eat your Pokespot food. Um, if he's out and about, you'll want to have this box checked. And if you've rounded him up and brought him back to where he needs to be, you uncheck this box. Um, this is also a good time to mention that you can only do this uh, RNG process either before you get the radar from Mirror B. So when you're actually getting the spot radar and learning how to use it, when you go to the last one, you'll encounter Mirror B and he'll give you a radar that'll like also go off while you're walking around. Um, that needs to be disabled. So you can either RNG these Pokemon before you get the Mirror B, Mirror B radar, but after you get the spot monitor, which is a very short window, or you have to capture all the shadow Pokemon, except for Dragonite, because Mirror B has that one. He goes to some other location where he's got it, um, and then the Mirror B radar will be disabled, and then you can RNG from that point on. So uh, I'm just putting in my initial seed into XD seed here, and uh, I put in an initial frames of 100,000 and I didn't find it uh, because I was looking for a brave uh, adamant, a brave or adamant Aeron. Um, I didn't find one that was shiny within the frame I wanted. Uh, so I set it to a million and then I found one at like 3 million and that was too much. So this is the initial phase of the RNG process. Um, you need to just put in your initial seed, put in your frame range and you're gonna be trying seeds until you find one that's like a reasonable amount uh, of advancements. Um, so I'm going to reset the game, I'm going to reset the seed finder, and we're going to go through the seed finding process one more time. Before you actually begin uh, the RNG process of uh, Pokespot Pokemon, you actually need to do some setup in your game. Um, you, you'll see you'll see like where I'm at and what I've done after I finish this initial seed process. 
but uh, in essence there's like three things you need to do. Uh, one, you need to go set the food at the uh, Poke spot where the Pokemon you want to spawn is, and that should be the only spot where you have food. Um, and then you also need to save outside Cypher Lab, um, because outside Cypher Lab is an area that has no RNG noise, so we're safe to do our advancements there without, um, without worrying about interference. So I'll pop in my HP values, Mew at 330, Raikou at 320, Zapdos 335, Blaziken 352. Hit my good old next pass button and uh, it should search and it'll find my initial seed. Uh, if it doesn't find it after this time, you might need to do one more pass. That's fine, and just follow the prompt. Trust the prompt. Uh, I have a little text file open. You can't copy the seed from this screen, um, so you just have to type it. I put it in a little text file and paste it there. And I'm gonna do another search, and I didn't find an Aeron uh, that I wanted, and I also forgot to set my uh, number of Pokemon in party. So I'm gonna need to find one more seed. Uh, so I'm gonna fast forward through the video until I've found the Aeron that I'm looking for. All right, I just got my new seed. I'm gonna paste it into the tool, do a search, and I found one that's 117,000-ish frames away. Uh, this is pretty good. Uh, you can advance frames, like the biggest way you can advance frames is looking at uh, Abra in your strategy memo for 2,645 frames per second. Um, so you take the advancements you need to do, you divide that by 2,645, and I see I need 44 seconds of waiting to get close. Um, I usually undershoot this heavily. Uh, I think when I load in, I'm only going to wait for around 35 seconds. Um, and, I mean, that's really just up to your tolerance. If I really, really wanted um, a specific one and I was willing to wait, I would do it. So now's a good time to go over the next tab we'll need, which uh, I call the Fidget Master 9000. Um, in Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, uh, if you don't touch your controller and you don't do anything with your character, uh, every, you know, 10 seconds or so, he does a little fidget animation, um, and you can use that to figure out what your current seed is. Um, so uh, as you'll see here, you paste in what your initial seed was that you found before. Um, your frame range you'll do from zero to, you know, maybe 20 to 50,000 more than what your target frame is. Um, and then once you load into the game, um, you're gonna be using those symbols, uh, the front and back, left and right, and up and down symbols to like track your fidget animations. After around 15 to 20, uh, it usually finds uh, your currency, like the results will get down to one. Um, and once we get loaded into the game, uh, you'll see that process happening live. So we've got our seed. Uh, we know what frame our Pokemon is on. We know how many advancements we wanna do. So now it is time to load into the game. Uh, and you'll see, like I said before, I am saved right outside Cypher Lab, so there's no RNG noise here. Um, I started off by checking my fidget animations, so you see that was a up and down. You don't actually have to test this uh, on your first go. You could go right in and do your weights. That was a front to back right there. Um, you don't actually have to do this first, but I like to do it just to sort of get the ball rolling and sort of establish it. Oh, we did a left to right, so boom, you just got to see all three fidget animations uh, right in order. Uh, so I'm gonna do these fidget animations for 15 times, and uh, I'm going to hit the search button underneath the percent bar there, and that's, you know, it's gonna be down to one result and give me a single seat. All right, so we're done with that. And uh, I actually only got down to two seeds, but the other one was like 150 something thousand frames past 
uh, uh, the beginning, and I know I haven't advanced that far, so I'm pretty confident that it's just the one. Um, I do one more. Uh, you're safe to pause here. Uh, pausing doesn't do anything. So now what I'm going to do is take that current seed from the rightmost column and paste it into the search tab so I can get a new number for how many advancements I need to do. And like I said before, you don't actually need to do this uh, seed verification because we have the initial seed finder. I just, you know, I, I like to do the fidget animations first to kind of get myself into the groove. So now I need to go 117,336 frames. Uh, I divide that by 2645 to get 44 seconds, uh, just like before. And I decide that I'm going to actually wait for around 35 just to sort of speed through this. Cool. Uh, so we're done looking at Abras. And now it's time to head back over to the Fidget Master 9000 and track our fidgets again to find out how far we advance. Um, so by now you might be kind of figuring out that this is sort of the process for getting on the exact seed that you want. You know, you find your initial seed, you search for the frame you need to hit to get your shiny, uh, you go in, you do your advancements, you track your fidgets, you find your seed, uh, you do your next advancements, which you can do a smaller number of advancements by looking at a Pokemon in your party rather than uh, a Pokemon in the strategy memo. Uh, I tested Abra in the strategy memo specifically for 2645 frames per second and then I had a Metacham in my party that I looked at and that got me 46 um, frames per second. Uh, I think different Pokemon have different advancements. Uh, it depends on how animated they are. I think like Gulpin doesn't move at all so he doesn't advance the RNG at all. Um, if you want to use my numbers, uh, Metatite is actually a uh, is actually like a trade Pokemon in this game, so you can uh, like go catch it, you like trade it for a Pokespot Pokemon. Uh, so you like get the guy, trade it, evolve your Metatite, and then you can be confident in the 46 per second. Or uh, you can use this process to sort of trial and error your own things. I know that uh, looking at a Shadow Pokemon summary in either the uh, PDA or in your party, those also have like wildly different uh, frame advancements. So uh, if you want to use my numbers, use my numbers. Or if you want to test your own because you don't feel like capturing the same Pokemon that I do, then that's fine. I'm just looking at the Metachamp summaries right now and uh, getting through all my advancements uh, so I can get into the final phase of the RNG process, which is uh, using saves, uh, opening and closing the item menu, and then watching fidgets. Um, to finalize things out. So I need to check my initial seed one last time after doing the Metacham advancements. I'm gonna keep things sped up for a while just because it's, it's kind of an arduous process. This is why I said, you know, if you wanna get into this, you know, I'm sorry for, for whoever hurt you because I mean, it really is, it's not difficult in terms of timing. You don't need to like hit a small frame window like if you're doing you know gen 3 or gen 4 rng or gen 7 rng instead it's all about patience and following the tools so i've just finished doing all my advancements and finding my initial seed and got it or my, not my initial seed but my current seed and i've narrowed it down to one so i'm going to paste that back into the tab and find out how many advancements i still need to do Looks like it's going to be 1,082 advancements, which is a nice small number that we can work with. So uh, you can do saves to advance the RNG by 63 frames. Uh, you can open and close the item menu to advance things by 13 frames. And then every single fidget uh, does two frames. So you can see here, I'm just sort of doing the math. I divide the frames by 63. Okay, I need to do 17 frame or 17 saves. That gets me to 1071. Uh, 1071 is pretty close to the 1082. You really don't want uh, to get too close with the saves because you need to, you, you want to end on fidgets because fidgets let you verify the current seed that you're actually on and that it matches what you see on the uh, Pokespot search tab. So uh, instead of doing 17, uh, I think I wind up doing uh, 16. Yeah, and so that's 1,008 frames, and that's, you know, that leaves me about, 
or that leaves me 74 frames that I need to advance. Um, so this last part is really just uh, doing the math. So I, I bring over my little notepad sheet here and uh, I'm gonna type out the math. And now for one last check, I just wanna add it all up. So uh, 16 saves times 63 for 1,008 plus 26 plus 48 is 1082, which is the exact number of frames I need to do. So now it's time to uh, just do the D. A nice rule of thumb to follow when you're doing the math for this is uh, to like leave 40 frames at the end so you can do your fidgets. Because fidgeting, like tracking the fidgets takes like 15 to 20 times um, to like verify what your current seat is. So if you leave 40 frames at two frames for fidget, you can like guarantee that once you're done fidgeting, you're gonna be on the exact frame that you want to get your shiny. All right, so now I'm uh, down close to the number of advanced minutes I needed to do. I needed to do 22 fidgets after my saves and uh, item menus to get it. So I like to slow down at this point and I pause for every one um, and verify that, you know, I, I, that I'm staying on my seat and just being very patient and paying attention. Um, one thing to note that I forgot about is that the 13 frames for the item menu, open and close, is actually specific to being outside Cypher Lab. Um, opening and closing the item menu is actually different um, depending on what map you're saved at. Um, there's actually a tab uh, that Jinzaru used with his tools um, that used this to find the initial seed. So you would actually like do a fidget and then um, and then open the item menu and close it and then do a fidget. So like it would use the combination of those two things to narrow down the seed. But now we have the initial seed finder, so uh, that's no longer necessary. So we're getting super close. Uh, I'm, at, I'm at 21, that's a left to right. Okay. So this will be the 22nd advancement. He did an up and down. Uh, I know this is a slow process. It requires a lot of patience. All right, plug that in. Yeah, okay, I only need four more advancements. Here we go. It's been a long journey with y'all. I know this is, I mean, this process took about an hour, and I think I'm gonna, at the end of this video, it'll be around 20 minutes. Uh, so it takes a long time, but it's definitely worth it. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna do the IV portion in this video. I'll make a separate video for doing the IVs because it's a whole other um, thing. And the nice thing about this is that once you get a shiny, um, you're good. So there we go. That is my seed. I'm gonna copy that and go over here and make sure that it says zero advancements in column two. It does, so I am at that point. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm confident that if I go to the poker spot, it's gonna be shiny. So all I have to do is run around um, until the radar goes off. And it's sort of like an egg generation. So you need to run around uh, like every 256 steps or something, there's a chance that the radar will go off. So it's a little bit random, but the nice thing is, is once it goes off, uh, you can save your game um, and then go check the spot. And you'll actually be able to see that it's shiny without even starting the encounter. And the nice thing about choosing to save after the radar goes off is that at that point, you can soft reset for IVs. Oh, and uh, abilities. Those are also set uh, after the soft reset. All right, so we've been doing a lot of running, and uh, any minute now, all right, the spot monitor's going off, so uh, that's good. The PID has just been locked. I'm gonna save it, and uh, if I did everything right, it's gonna be shiny. Spoiler alert, I pre-recorded this, so it is shiny. Um, but if, if you did this wrong, then guess what? You gotta go back and do the whole thing. So I saved, I'm gonna travel to the Poke Spot, and Aaron's a little different, his shiny outside is like kind of gray, so you can't quite tell here, but shiny Aaron's eyes are red, so we're gonna start the encounter, and bingo, there he is. We have, uh, we've done it. So there you go. Shiny Pokespot RNG. Uh, look forward to the 
uh, video for RNGing IVs coming up soon. Thanks, everybody.